Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to War in the Pacific Admiral's Edition, my Let's Play series against Evoken. Uh, it's been a while since our last episode here, but we will be doing a couple of turns here today. Oh shit, a submarine of ours just hit a mine off of, off of the Dutch East Indies. I don't even remember that happening. Uh, but we will be doing a couple of turns here today. It's been a while since, I think it's been like a month since I posted the last episode of this to my YouTube channel. Uh, we had a submarine taking some depth charging off of Meaden. Uh, it is May 27th of 1942 for the replay at the moment. Uh, but like I said, we have three or four turns in the, uh, in the bucket, if you will. Uh, for today's episode. Um, we're starting off with some submarine activity here. Also, it looks like one of our subs has some flotation uh, temporary repairs that are failing. We'll have to take a look at that. Uh, but uh, but all, all being said, uh, as you may recall, actually, I don't even remember if I told you guys this, but uh, the plan for today, uh, and there's a hit but no explosion because the Mark 14 is a, is a garbage torpedo. Um, but the plan for today is to run some fighter sweeps over Bangkok and hopefully catch the Japanese um, fighter cover there uh, by surprise. You know, I'm assuming that he's got some cap over over Bangkok and we've got P-38s at Rangoon. So my hope is to run a fighter sweep and catch some some, you know, unprepared Japanese fighter aircraft. Um, dropping down on them and, and diving on them to do some, basically just ambush them. Uh, that's the hope. You can see him bombing Coast Coast Islands right now. But we'll see if that comes to fruition. We do know that he's got a fair amount of aircraft based out of Bangkok, but he hasn't really been bombing Burma or anything like that. He is behind in taking Burma from us. So we do know that, you know, he needs to catch up in that area. Uh, but whether they actually, uh, whether there's you know, how, how soon we can expect the Japanese to start leveraging the aircraft they've got at Bangkok against us uh, remains to be seen. Um, but looks like nothing much really happened in the air uh, AM phase for our airplanes. I'll we'll have to see if the aircraft actually flew from Rangoon. It could be a later day strike too, because it is kind of a longer, a longer range flight. So maybe they don't arrive till the afternoon. Um, but none of our fighters at Rangoon can actually make it to Bangkok, except for the P-38s. They're the only ones with sufficient range. But yeah, it doesn't look like anything actually happened. Uh, anything sort of manifested itself. We also did fire some torpedoes here at some Japanese destroyers here at Meaden, um, which are presumably guarding some tankers there, and, uh, and not much happened there either. So kind of a disappointing turn. The, the fighters didn't fly, and the... We had a submarine run into a mine, uh, and uh, that's about it. It doesn't look like the Japanese are beginning their assault at Clark Field quite yet. Um, so we're still we're still just dealing with Japanese bombardments in the Philippines, which is holding on. Uh, we're almost to June of '42, and yet he hasn't taken the Philippines yet either. Japan is definitely behind the uh, the eight ball there for uh, for taking both the Philippines and also taking Burma. Um, that being said, they have taken New Caledonia, as, uh, as regular viewers will know. So they've pushed much further south than historically was the case. They've taken Espiritu Santos, Guadalcanal, um, and New Caledonia. But they have not uh, taken, uh, taken Burma or the Philippines yet. So um, I think it's a bigger issue that they haven't taken Burma. Honestly, the drive south is just sort of the end of a really long supply line that's going to be difficult for them to maintain under any kind of real pressure. Uh, but we'll see. Anyway, that was a pretty uneventful turn here. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to, before we jump in, you know, we could look at, at the uh, in-between stuff. We could look at the turn itself. But honestly, I'm just going to jump in and do the next replay because like I said, I've got, I actually have four turns here uh, for replays to show. So I might as well just jump right in and uh, and do the next next replay right away since it was such an uneventful turn and we'll see if if we maybe get the uh, the aircraft to fly there um, this time. All right, so we're now on to May 28th of 1942. Again, like the game is very, very detailed if you're not familiar with it in, in the actual issuing of orders. 
Uh, but because I've got so many turns in the bucket, I don't think there's a lot of sense to jump into the actual turn where we can issue orders since I've already issued the orders for those turns. And we can look at that once we get through all the replays. So we are now into the May 28th replay, starting off with some submarine activity and a hit but no explosion off of Boila, which is off the northwest tip of New Guinea. There's actually some oil production here. So sinking enemy ships here would be ideal because they're probably carrying oil back to the home islands, which is very important in this game. Again, if you're unfamiliar. Oh, yeah. Mark 48 did some damage. We got a hit on the Kayo Maru. Uh, a Mark 48 from the USS Triton uh, was fired at that uh, merchant ship there. And we get a little bit of a bubbly noise here in my headset, which means that it is likely uh, that the enemy ship sank. That basically means, hey, something sank somewhere in the Pacific. And given that that occurred just after we torpedoed that enemy ship, almost certainly uh, that was the ship that sank. So that's good news. Mark 48 getting a, a rare win early in the game. Um, but, uh, but yeah, anyone who's familiar with this game already knows this. But if you're not, the entire Japanese home economy is modeled in this game. And so Japan has to spend a lot of effort getting oil back to the home islands or their economy will quickly starve and their industrial production and other things like that will fail so really important for japan to get as much oil back to the home islands as possible as well as resources that's a little less pressing they get a lot of resources in china but they really do need the oil out of places like boila out of the dutch east indies um, and a couple of other places here. But you can see the Triton is not is not resting on its laurels, everybody. It is going right back into the act and launching an attack on another Japanese merchant ship here, another light coastal merchant. AKL means it's a coastal merchant, uh, but going after another one here. Looks like we got one hit but no explosion, but I think I saw a hit there as well. And then we've also got a deck gun action. They're firing a whole bunch of their deck guns against the Shoyu Maru. 17 shell hits, one torpedo hit, heavy fires, heavy damage, probably sank. Yep, got another one there, got the bubbly noise there. So the Triton sank two Japanese light coastal merchants off the northwest coast of New Guinea. That might be the biggest single day victory for our submarine force in the war. Meanwhile, our P-38s out of Rangoon did fly today over Burma or, or over Bangkok. 23 p38 e lightnings flying out of rangoon launched a sweep against bangkok and i am frankly stunned he didn't have any fighter patrol over bangkok that is an important base it has oil refineries it has some oil production i believe but certainly oil refineries and it's an important port the fact that he has no and we know he's got like a hundred plus aircraft on the ground here so the fact that he had no fighters providing any combat air patrol over bangkok I mean, in this case, probably smart for him because the P-38 is better than anything else he has right now. Um, and we also have an altitude advantage, so we would have been able to dive on, anyth on anything. And he does know that we have P-38s in Burma because, remember, he was our logistics officer before our prior opponent did sort of switch sides, or not switch sides, but sort of quit. Um, but, uh, but that being said, still kind of interesting, kind of gutsy for him to have no combat air patrol if we had launched bombers there we might have been able to destroy some aircraft on the ground as it was we did not and uh, his lack of a, of a cap probably saved some japanese pilots lives so that's a little disappointing you know kind of a mixed turn here we had the uh the submarines uh taking out a couple of merchant ships this turn which was uh frankly uh, more exciting than we've seen in the last few turns it's kind of in a bit of a lull in uh, in combat right now uh, but the but the lack of uh, any air battle with our fighters running a sweep over bangkok a bit disappointing also that's kind of a long range sweep uh it's like seven or eight hexes there so it really drives up the fatigue on those fighter pilots so you, it's not the kind of long range mission you can you can expect to maintain your aircraft will break down your pilots will get tired and you will greatly reduce the efficiency of your your sweep we only have the one squadron of P-38s at Rangoon right now, so it's not like we can swap squadrons in and out because none of the other aircraft have the range to get there. Um, so that is that's something also to consider. Is you know we I could do it again tomorrow probably, but I don't know how wise it would be, especially with the fatigue those those airframes are going to take, those pilots are going to take. It's just kind of a, a thing you got to be a little bit 
a little bit mindful of, a little bit careful of uh, that you don't that you don't overdo it. But let's go ahead and let's jump into another replay here. We will we will jump into the actual turn and take a look at things um, before too long. But let's so we did the twenty seventh, we did the twenty eighth. Uh, let's go ahead and do. I guess it's the 29th now as well before we jump in and uh, and look at the turn. This is the same play by email I started with XTRG Alpha. It is. All right, so we are on to May 29th, 1942. Uh, we're now playing Evoken, by the way, Alpha. So we're moving on to May 29th, 1942. We'll see if we get a lot of activity this turn or not. Um, I believe I stood the P-38s down for the same reason that I sort of just elaborated with you. They were too tired. The airframes were requiring a fair bit of maintenance. Um, and so today, starting off with some depth charging of some of our subs off Meaden, uh, a couple of hits there. Nothing too damaging. We hadn't lost any submarines. We did have that one sub that struck a mine off the coast of the Dutch East Indies, but that sub is, is getting back you know what was that temporary did it say temporary flooding or temporary repairs or failing on the prince of wales because that sucks if it is remember the prince of wales is on its way back to uh great britain to try and repair more quickly at their shipyards it is much more efficient than trying to repair in south africa uh and so she's on her way back to great britain but it's like a 50 day trip it's not a fast fast trip so we'll have to see what the uh what the status is of the uh, of the of the Prince of Wales, the Repulse, you know, both the Prince of Wales and the Repulse, which were historically sunk in the opening days of World War II in the Pacific, um, both of those ships survived for us. The Prince of Wales took a ton of damage. The Repulse took a moderate amount of damage. The Repulse has since been repaired and has returned to service. The Prince of Wales is still like almost a year out in terms of the serious amount of damage she took, and so we're trying to get her back to England where she'll repair more quickly but she's moving very slowly uh, in that direction. Meanwhile, the Japanese are dropping a large number of uh, munitions here on Clark, F or actually, no, that's Batan. Um, but so far, no real push into the Philippines, like no real push against Clark Field. Um, a while back, we did have a major battle at, uh, at Batan where we drove two Japanese divisions back to Clark Field and we mauled them pretty seriously. We pursued them to Clark Field and attacked again at Clark Field. The Japanese just barely held us off and that has basically been where the front line has sort of stagnated. The problem is in those battles, we used a lot of supplies and we do not have basically any supply left. So now it's really just a matter of time until our forces there are destroyed. Certainly a better performance than was historically the case for the Americans in the Philippines. Uh, but not not enough to change the tide there. Uh, history will will repeat itself uh, if if you know with more honor, I suppose. Hit but no explosion. There's the Mark 14 that we know and love. The Thresher off the west coast of Japan. And then also we did uh, we did land some troops on a Japanese held island this episode. You can see we're landing troops there on Vadavupu. Uh, there are no Japanese troops there apparently. Our troops apparently went a home went ashore alone. The Kanga force here in the Elise Islands, um, north of Savi and north of uh, Fiji. So we did land troops at uh, Vaitupu, uh, and uh, there's nothing there. So the Japanese occupied the island. We just took it back from the Japanese. And so the steamroller of the American offensive in the Central Pacific is underway. It, it, it was sort of an opportunistic strike out at the Japanese. The goal with that strike is to sort of begin pushing the strategic line of communications back uh, away from the Fiji line um, and to threaten sort of the vulnerable flank of the Japanese uh, in, in the Central Pacific to possibly squeeze off supplies that might be heading south toward New Caledonia, but also just to give us a bit more breathing room for our convoys going back and forth on the U.S. West Coast. Uh, the most, As much as we can push back on some of those sort of frontier islands uh, against the Japanese, that is going to be very valuable for us uh, because, again, right now, like if they put float planes at Vatapu or, or anywhere else like that, frankly, they can... They can get a real good sense of where our ships are and what's what's being moved where, um, and uh, and that's not great, right? Like that that's not something that um, I'm okay with. So we've got to make sure that uh, that we we push them back where we can. 
Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and... So we've done three replays. We'll do the fourth and final one, and then we'll jump into the actual turn. So you can see we are now into May 30th. What is play by email? Oh my goodness. Um, now I feel old. <laughs> uh, play by email is uh, when you take a save file from a game and you email it to your opponent and they open the file and then they play that file. So basically I play the game locally on my computer. I issue my orders for my, for my, for my troops and then i save the save the file there's a password there i end the turn and then it goes back to my opponent who when they open it because i've already ended the turn now they have to put their password in and they can access their side of the game so it's an i go it's it's an i go you go system where i issue my orders they issue their orders but then there's sort of a simultaneous resolution so it's not it's not like a true i go you go it's more like an i you know i issue order you issue order and then and then we get a simultaneous resolution of a save file but the save file looks different for each player when they open it up based on fog of war so it's kind of complicated where like the japanese player may see a slightly different replay um, or slightly different information in the replay than the allied player because they kind of have perfect knowledge about their units but i have perfect knowledge about my units um but but effectively it's there's no server or anything like that it's just i issue my orders and you issue your orders and then we see what happens um and the the method of of switching back between the players historically has been an email i know slither and the publishers of this game have um have some of their newer games they actually do host servers that manage all that for you so you don't actually have to send an email but uh, war in the pacific is an older it's an older game and so it still does work by the by the play by email army boy thank you very much for the prime sub i appreciate the support uh and uh really you know appreciate it thank you Yeah, play by mail was a thing people used to do with board games, right? Like board gaming, that was a big thing where you would like I don't know, that's that's not my time. I'm not I'm not I'm not quite dating myself that much, but like I think you would like write down where you would move pieces on a board game and then you'd send a letter in the mail with those instructions and then your opponent would move those pieces on their on the board game that they have at their house. And then they, and then you would do the same. So you'd like keep two separate boards, one at your house, one at their house, and then you could sort of play each other that way. Um, but I guess this is sort of a digital version of that. Sometimes when you hit the exit button on the replay, it closes the game. Uh. Did I not? Sorry, one sec. I might actually have one more replay. I'm a moment. I do. I believe I have the June 1st replay. So let me actually pull that up. Or maybe it's the May 31st. I lost track of what day we were on. Okay. All right, so five replays here. So we are about to do the May 31st replay here. We just did the May 30th. So we started on the 27th, did the 28th, did the 29th, did the 30th, and now we're going to do the 31st. We've almost got a we've got a whole working week of replays in here, folks. Um I've never done that many replays, but uh, a hit but no explosion. God damn it, that was a fat looking merchant ship off the northern tip of Japan. <sighs> All right, so depth charge in here. Doesn't look like they hit the drum with any uh, torpedoes. I believe the drum is newly reporting to that section of, uh, of coast, by the way. We've had the thresher off the sort of western coast of Japan, but I don't think the drum has done anything in a while there, so that should be a new a new ish. Um, submarine on patrol. I know some of our subs are starting to get a little bit low on torpedoes, and so I sent some new subs out there for 
uh, for to, to replenish the sort of the p- the picket line, if you will, of absolute ineffectiveness. We got a Dutch submarine here getting depth charged off Rabaul. That's dangerous. One, the Dutch subs aren't as good, aren't as durable. But two, Rabaul is really short, uh, really shallow. Uh, that's a port hex. That's always very risky. So I have to take a look and see how much damage that did. That looked like a good hit, but I didn't have any like alert of like heavy damage or flooding or fires. So. I'm assuming she's okay. Um, that being said, Japanese here continuing to bomb Coast Coast, which is unfortunate. I've got a couple of really good Australian battalions there, and so it's turned into a bit of a training camp for the Japanese bomber pilots who do need places they can bomb without too much risk. That feels like one of those places. I do have some plans in motion uh, to try and uh, and try and intercept those bombers because they seem to be outside the range of Japanese fighter cover but I, I don't have I don't have the means to do that at the moment so we will see how am I going compared to historical um, we mentioned a little bit earlier in the episode but effectively worse in the South Pacific the Japanese took Guadalcanal, Espiritu Santos, New Caledonia so really pushed in on the supply line between the west coast of the US and Australia effectively there it's not cut or anything. I can still divert further south. It's just less efficient. In terms of Burma and the Philippines, better than historical. Uh, we still have troops at Clark Field, and it is about to be June 1st, unless he launches an attack here, because uh, I actually haven't seen this. Nope, he did not. Um, so he's still bombarding at Clark Field, so those troops are still surviving. Now, they won't survive much longer. We basically have no supply left here. Uh, but the fact that we still have a presence at Clark Field on June 1st is pretty remarkable for the Allies in the Pacific Theater. And I think more importantly, uh, because those troops are bottled up, more importantly, uh, Burma has not even begun to be taken. They, they took Mole Mine, I believe it was, and then we, we actually retook it. Um, and so we still have a firm grip in Burma, and he has to take Burma if he doesn't want to... If, if he wants to avoid disaster... He has to take Burma because once we start getting more B-24s, that's going to open up a lot of targeting of shipping lanes and even some of the northern Dutch East Indy oil fields. Um, I believe it like Meden, for example, would be in the range of B-24s. And if he doesn't get Burma by the time the B-29 comes online, that's game over. The B-29 can basically crush Palembang from, from Rangoon. And Palembang is the most important oil producing facility on the map. So... Um, he needs to take Burma. Like in theory, he's probably got a year or so before it's a critical thing from a, from a, what we can do damage wise, but we'll be getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So he needs to take it now, or he may not take it at all. Speaking of Burma, we've got about 70,000 supplies in the port there at Rangoon. We have multiple convoys unloading supplies here. We're finally into the actual turn, uh, after all those replays, you can see we've got about 15,000 supply on two different uh, task forces here. One task force just finished unloading and is going to be returning to Colombo. Uh, but then we've got uh, two more task forces unloading about uh, actually 16,000 supply here. 70,000 in the port right now. Uh, as you can see here, we've we've got troops at Mole Mine. We've got uh, how many troops here? We've got 1,800 assault value. So we've got the 17th Indian Division, the 18th British Division. The 18th British Division is... Um, I, no, they're not that good. They have 50 experience. Uh, we've got the 1st Burma Division, which is also not very good. The 46th Indian Brigade, the 7th Armored Brigade, which is very good. These guys had actually fought in Africa before they got deployed here in North Africa against uh, the Italians and the Germans there. But uh, they've got 73 experience. This is one of the best units for the Commonwealth forces on the map. So the 7th Armored Brigade, 7th Australian Division, also a very good unit, almost 60 experience here. They were also, I believe, fighting in North Africa, and they were diverted, so we we shipped them into Burma. So a couple of really good units here um, that uh, that are stuck, and they're not stuck, but they're at Mole Mine with plenty of supply to fight the Japanese. The real threat here is if he moves from Chiang Mai and then cuts our forces at Mole Mine off, which is probably what he should do. If we actually take a look at the road networks, you can hop here. Um, when you've got that sort of just dead end supply line, it is not very efficient to do it from a supply perspective, but he could supply from this hex into here inefficiently, but he could do it, uh, and, uh, and effectively cut our troops down here off. 
Uh, but by holding Mole Mine, we also ensure that the Japanese cannot sort of shuttle bombard Pegu into oblivion. Um, and Pegu is sort of the key base in our rear to hold. So if he had Mole Mine, he could basically have resupply ships at Mole Mine here and then just have ships bombard Pegu, fall back to Mole Mine, reload, move back up to Pegu. So he could effectively bombard this hex every single day, every single turn, which would cause sort of cascading amounts of damage. There'd be no time to repair the damage from the bombardments and be able to, to really effectively walk, probably walk into Pegu because of the amount of damage the bombardments would be causing. And then he'd be adjacent to Rangoon. And also Pegu can just, you can see this little arrow here. He can just jump north and easily isolate Rangoon. So if Pegu falls, Rangoon's days are numbered as well. Um, and flanking up through Burma would be easy. So really holding Mole Mine and then trying to hold the desert here east of Pegu, or not desert, but the, the jungle hex east of Pegu are kind of the two important spots on this map to hold. But in any event, Burma is ours still, uh, and no no real rumblings of the Japanese taking it from us yet. So uh, that's going well. Meanwhile, our P-38s who did the sweep over Bangkok, you can see we've actually got all their aircraft back operational. There were about three days there where like seven or eight of the aircraft were down for repairs, but they're all back to operational. The fatigue is 23, which is pretty high, uh, but uh, but at least the aircraft are functional. And we've got a number of other aircraft there as well, about 150 aircraft there as well. Thank you, by the way, Tax and Duck, for the sub. I appreciate the support. Uh, that's uh, that, It means a lot to me, you guys, when you, when you do sub. I really do appreciate it. Helps the channel out uh, and uh, is greatly appreciated on, on my end. Meanwhile, in China, uh, just the one unit here south near Quilin, uh, we've been trying to move some additional reinforcements here to drive the Japanese back here. I'm a little worried there's going to be a, th a southern thrust and they're going to use this good roadway here to drive up toward Chongqing. The Japanese are OP in China compared to history. Uh, it is very feasible for a good Japanese player to overrun China quickly. Uh, we have lost some key territory in here near like Changsha and other places like that. But China's been fairly quiet for the last... Oh, I don't know, three months or so in game terms. Um, but he did move one unit here between Quilin and uh, and Lu Cho, and so that does make me a bit nervous. The The primary issue for the Allies in China is always supply. You don't have enough supply to go around uh, and do what you need to do. Um, we have been greatly benefited by Burma not falling yet. China gets 2,000 free supply every single day that the Burma road remains open, and so... The Burma Road is open, and so we are getting a lot of supply into China, but we are also consuming a lot of supply through our efforts to build fortifications and other things to slow the Japanese down. Um, and I, I probably should be keeping a closer eye on that to make sure that we're not over-consuming. As of like a month ago in game terms, our supply in China had doubled from the starting date, uh, but I've also started digging in a bit more in a few more places. So that may no longer be the case. And the fact that we've got a bunch of these yellow and, and red exclamations popping up indicating supply is not what we would want it to be is a little concerning. Now, some of that's because I just moved a whole bunch of cores into Lucho here so that the supply wasn't there when they moved in. Uh, but I'll need to I'll need to dig into that. But no apparent changes here in China this turn. I don't see any indication of Japanese movements or anything to be concerned about um, other than the individual division or, or brigade or whatever's down here. Um, Central China's sitting at Chikikong, which has a, a very strong fortification here. It's level level five forts and we're halfway to level six. So this is a behind a river line. This is a very well dug in unit uh, with a considerable amount of firepower. They could try and bypass us and go north, but again, they'd have to cross a river into a difficult hex and we also do have considerable troops on the other side of the river to prevent that. So all things to keep in mind. But China for the moment looks reasonably um, reasonably secure at the moment. Prince of Wales on the way back to England. Uh, doesn't look like whatever that pop-up about flotation damage getting worse must have been taken care of. Because flood damage is 39 out of a major amount of 39, which I believe is what it was previously. She's still a ways away, 55 days away from England, but um, I don't think there's, unless I rush her there, I don't think there's a risk of her sinking. Um, okay. 
Did we also have? So we had the one su- the, the one sub struck a mine. I don't see. Someone struck a mine off the coast of the Dutch East Indies. I don't remember who it was. It might have been Shark, but the system damage on that is is manageable. Actually, it was probably Tautog. Float damage is 31, but that's still manageable to get back to port. So things are going okay there. Meanwhile, at Bombay, we've, uh, we've got a couple of American fighter squadrons. We have been reinforcing India a lot in this game. This seems to be like India is going to be where the war is decided. Um, we have... You can see here 50 American fighter aircraft uh, at Bombay. Uh, We had our carriers there not that long ago. We have also brought in like 300 aircraft to Karachi. Uh, P-39s, B-26s, P-40s. A huge percentage of the available American Air Force has been deployed to India. um, Because, again, we are expecting, given that they're behind in Burma, we are expecting a major Japanese push into Burma. And so I'm not going to push too many troops into Burma because the supply situation in Burma, the roads in Burma don't link up with the roads in India because of these mountain ranges. So you need to try and move as much supply into Burma as possible via, via C, which is what we've been doing. Um, so I don't want to overtax the limited supply we have in Burma in the event of a conflict, but we will push a whole bunch of American air power into Eastern India uh, to try and support the operations in Burma. Um, and that, that's what the plan is. Meanwhile, at Clark field, we already said that the, uh, the troops there basically are starving. Uh, you can see the supplies all in the red. Nobody has more than 60 supply. The 41st Filipino army division needs 416 supply. They've got 59. And so that's not good. Uh, those, those boys are going to start losing effectiveness rapidly. Uh, the constabulary division here has already, well, actually, most of their troops are still effective. You only got 15 disrupted, despite 43 out of a needed 700 supply, but still not a good situation to be in. We did actually drop some supply in via sub. We had three submarines come in and do some, uh, they're in the process, I guess, of un- unloading some supply, uh, bringing in about 130 supply, but that is, submarines aren't going to, su- I mean, we need... 6,500 supply. We're bringing in 130, which is going to increase our supply in hex from 500 to 630, but still less than 10% of the supply that we need there uh, for even a short period of operations. Um, so something to something to sort of just be aware of. We got a whole bunch of subs in the Strait of Malacca, not really doing much, just kind of getting hit by Japanese sub patrols, uh, but uh, trying to make sure that they, they don't push anything north on us and surprise any of uh, any of our units there the philippines not a lot is going on here we've got you know supply not philippines oh my god australia we've got a number of large supply convoys coming in Forty thousand fuel coming in here uh some aircraft coming in as well as um so what is that Seven thousand supply um so we're trying to divert south because the japanese had been hitting us on this route here with some subs. So trying to divert around those subs into Perth and supplying Australia from the West. And then, uh, and then as you can see here, not a lot of shipping off the East coast of Australia. That's because the Japanese have taken new Caledonia, which is not good, not good at all, but we've begun pushing back there. You can see we landed troops at Vatavupu uh, a couple turns ago. We took uh, that, that Japanese base from them. And, uh, and so hopefully these guys will keep unloading these supplies here quickly so that we can pull out moving northwest. So one ship moving northwest, probably a submarine, maybe a destroyer trying to get out of these islands here. We also retook Baker Island for the Japanese not that long ago. They had actually pushed there, and they had taken Savi as well. We've retaken that. So we are not in any in any sense in like a full-blown Allied counteroffensive, but we've been picking our spots when we know the Japanese don't have a considerable force around. We've been taking advantage of them being overextended and if, if we can if we can hold Vatavufu, uh, the airfield capacity is not good there. But the hope is to take uh, Funafuti after that, um, and then maybe push north to take Na no Na, Naume. Um, but effectively, we're trying to we're trying to threaten the Japanese Central Pacific holdings at Tarawa, Ocean Island. 
maybe push west. You know, we could use this as a base to try and isolate the Japanese forces down here, um, at least threatening to kind of pinch in on them and, and certainly narrowing the supply line by taking Vatavupu, like the, the, the ability to supply ships this way or this way or wherever, like it does narrow the ability to send in supply ships without, without us detecting anything. Baker actually, you know, only one Canton can have up to a level two airfield, but they're all kind of out of range of Tarawa at the moment. How long does an average turn take? Uh, it depends there, you know, the first turn of the game, like the December 7th turn, you can put 10 hours easy into setting things up. Um, but at moments like this, when things are fairly slow, 30, 40 minutes, it, it all depends. Um, you know, how much, how, what's all going on. Let's take a look at, uh, the information here is a pretty quiet turn for aircraft losses. Uh, just a single Betty, a single Mitchell, um, if we take a look at, uh, top pilots, we didn't lose anyone KIA. We've lost a total of 700 and, or th 317 pilots lost so far. The top allied ace at the moment, uh, is still dead. T Cole of the U S army air force was flying with the flying tigers and a H 81, which is a P 40 variant. The flying tigers flew, uh, he was killed a while back, uh, but we've got a number of guys still all sitting on seven kills, including Pappy Boyington here. Uh, also with the AVGs, he's flying P-38s now. Um, and uh, I thought we had a Dutch pilot in here somewhere. But uh, but yeah, here you can see U.S. Army, U.S. Army. Oh yeah, Dutch right here. Uh, Van Harlem uh, is the second, is tied at seven for the second leading ace flying P-40E Warhawks. So, um, but yeah, not, it's a couple of guys, KA, a few, few MIA on this aces list if you will ship sunk i don't think anything was sunk last turn nope uh the last ships that we did report as being sunk were on the 28th which were those two akls that we claimed to sink off of boila pretty confident they were sunk both by mark 14s pretty rare um, before that, the last ship that was sunk was on the 26th, which was a Dutch cargo ship uh, or Commonwealth cargo ship uh, to Japanese 53 centimeter type 95 uh, off of Buslin. Um, in terms of ship availability, I don't I think we're we're nine days away from the Wasp coming online and also the North Carolina, both at Balboa. Uh, so that'll be nice to have another carrier. Most of our carriers right now are sitting in South Africa doing some refits. So we've got two carriers in the moment, uh, the Lexington and Saratoga. They are about two weeks away from completing their refits there. And then we have, I believe, the Enterprise in Yorktown are on the way there as well. I don't think they're there quite yet. Or maybe they arrived this turn. They did. So you can see here we've got the Enterprise here arrived in South Africa this turn. Um, she doesn't have a refit available. We're trying to reconcentrate our our carriers, if you will. Um, and then, did we have another? Was it just the Enterprise, or I thought we had uh, another group on the way there? I know the Yorktown is somewhere, somewhere on the way there, because we pulled most of our carriers out of Bombay. They had all been at Bombay. The Hermes is on the way there. Uh, but now the aircraft carrier... Oh, Yorktown is still there. Okay, maybe I was mistaken. But Yorktown is still there with the British carrier Indomitable. Um, we'll probably want to change that here. I swear I pulled her out, but I guess not. Uh, we do also have the only other carrier in a like totally different location is Hornet, which is currently at Pearl. Um, secure there. And uh, and yes, you can recover MIA pilots. It It's not like... I can't issue the order to be like... Go get this pilot, uh, but MIA pilots will occasionally return to you. Uh, if a lot go, like so, the way that it works typically is like if I'm flying fighter missions over friendly territory in like Burma, and my pilots are shot down, 
There's a good chance they bail out. If they bail out, there's a good chance they are recovered to me. They can be wounded in action and be out of service for a while. They can be totally fine and go right back into their unit. Um, they can be missing sometimes or it takes them a while to get back to your lines. If you're flying over hostile enemy territory, you're much less likely to recover that pilot, right? Um, but you can. It is possible for them to be MIA and then still be recovered. Um, so it it's just not as likely depending on who controls the hex that you bail out over. But yeah. Anyway, that that's a whole bunch of turns. It's June 1st of 1942. I'm not sure I have anything else to talk about right now. I know I've got some fighter groups that are a little bit overdue for uh, for withdrawal back to Europe. Um I think I might have pulled most of them out, actually. But we do have a couple of... Or those aren't fighter groups. Those are ground units. Um, group withdrawals. Yeah, so we've got B-26s here at San Diego are overdue. I can't withdraw them for whatever reason. I don't know where I need to... Does anybody in the chat know where you need to fly your aircraft so they can withdraw in the U.S. West Coast? Is it... They're in San Diego. Is it San Francisco or LA? Have I actually finished a game like this storm? I personally have not. Um, people definitely do, but it does, it does take a good long while. Is refitting in South Africa cheaper than going to Hawaii or San Diego? It is for an upgrade. So like when you do a refit that is a scheduled refit where you need to just, you know, get new, new. So like you could re be replacing anti-aircraft guns, adding radar, things like that. Don't think the quality of the port factors into how quickly you're brought back up, up to service. When it comes to repairs, however, uh, the actual location that your repairs are occurring at, like England, for example, we're sending Prince of Wales back there. It is much more efficient and quicker to repair in England or the U.S. East Coast, for example, than it is to repair in South Africa or Australia, for example. Um, yeah, so I, I think San Diego might be where they need to go. I'm not really sure. Or not San Diego, San Francisco. Any of these guys, can they withdraw? Or are these guys all stuck? I'm getting, by the way, when you have units that are overdue, you get you get penalized effectively from a, from a gameplay perspective. I suppose I could disband the group, but I'd, I'd rather not do that. But you get penalized victory points, which effectively represents like, hey, folks aren't thrilled with you. Like, you're supposed to, you're being told to, to send these guys somewhere, and you're not, so... Maybe you get in trouble. I'm not sure if it's San Francisco, but we'll try that. Actually, no, some of these guys are already here, aren't they? No, those flew. Those are just are flying. And these guys are already here and they cannot withdraw. What are the, I, why, I don't understand. All right, we'll try and go to Los Angeles. And it's in the manual somewhere. Somewhere in the manual, it'll tell me what to do. But this is one of those games you probably should read the manual to play. But yeah. Anyway, guys, I think that's probably going to do it for today's episode. I guess we can take a look at Sigint first, see if there's any, any intelligence reporting that's interesting. Okay. Eh, not really. Pretty quiet dance on the signals intelligence. So nothing really there. But yeah, I think that's going to do it for today's uh, today's episode with multiple turns. I do appreciate you guys tuning in. For the folks who are watching on Twitch right now, uh, we will probably do an Ultimate General American Revolution stream tomorrow night. Um, longer than this one. Uh, but it is it is been a long week at work and I've been doing a lot of editing of a podcast which is going to be coming out Hopefully next week, um, I'm going to try and finish it up tomorrow, but I'm not optimistic. Um, so it'll probably be coming out like Monday-ish. 
Um, and so I just, I don't have the energy to do more streaming tonight, but we will be doing uh, probably ultimate general American revolution tomorrow on the channel uh, around the same time. Uh, so if you're interested in that, check that out. Uh, Army boy and tan x duck thank you very much for the subs as well as the 20 plus other folks who continue to sub to the channel i do appreciate the support and uh without further ado that's gonna do it for today's uh for today's stream so until next time this is the historical gamer saying thank you very much for watching and until next time i'm out Bye bye <laughs>